It's Wednesday, baby. It is Wednesday hump day on the hottest show on the streets, the number one form for Crimson Tide football news. We got you right here in my own words with yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Appreciating everybody tuning into the, to the show on tonight. We got a lot to break down, a lot to go over and discuss. The show is always brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter.com. That is weownthefourthquarter.com. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and cop you that four-finger bling necklace, four-finger bling jewelry, showing that support to Coach Saban, the University of Alabama, and the, the tradition of dominating and or owning the fourth quarter. So weownthefourthquarter.com. That is weownthefourthquarter.com. Get you that four finger bling necklace today. We're bringing you the show from beautiful Tuscaloosa, streaming this to you via YouTube. Speaking of the channel, you can go ahead right now, give a thumbs up, like the show up, give a like on the show, hit that subscribe button, turn on all of those notifications so that way you can have all of the alerts and information and coverage on your favorite program, that being the Crimson Tide. Not only are we streaming this live to the YouTube channel, but we also got you covered on Facebook and Twitter. So Facebook world, Twitterverse, YouTube, no excuse for you not to be locked in to the hottest ticket of Crimson Tide football. Got the man, John Ivory, my brother from another mother in the production studio, doing his thing as he does every single time. And we are excited to have you, the fans, on this show. And we want you guys to be a part of the conversation tonight. You can do this by calling 205-448-1358, the number to dial to let your voice be heard on the show. 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. Definitely want to hear from you, your thoughts, your opinions, your takes, your viewpoints coming from you, the Alabama Nation, the Crimson Tide fan base. Also, a little bit later on in the show, we'll be joined by two outstanding guests. First and foremost, we have Chris Franklin, who covers the Philadelphia Eagles for NJ.com, for the, for the New Jersey.com site. And for Franklin, he's going to be coming on to discuss one Jalen Hurts. Yes! The Eagles, Doug Peterson, has made the move to start Jalen Hurts this weekend. Instead, this weekend against the, uh, the New Orleans Saints, putting the likes of Carson Wentz on the bench for this game, seeing as how Hurts was able to spark the team in the matchup, or in the matchup over the well, in the matchup on Monday Night Football, or the matchup over you know, during this week. So, getting a chance to have Jalen Hurts 
start this matchup here against those New Orleans Saints. We'll talk to Franklin about that. And then having one Marquise Mays on the show. Former Alabama wide receiver Marquise Mays, who played from 2008 to 2011, part of two uh, national championship teams. He'll come on to discuss the challenges, the difficulty of an Alabama team that wants to go undefeated. And we're talking about this year. Mays was on that 2009, the only undefeated national title team of the Saban era. We get this thing started off with the Super Chat as the man Jimmy Clay drops in with that $20 donation helping us out here at TDA. Appreciate that love coming from Jimmy Clay. But before we dive into the first topic of conversation, we have an update here as the Alabama family, the Alabama football family, that being lost a legend, a pioneer earlier this morning as former legendary player and head coach for the Crimson Tide, Ray Perkins, passed away this morning at the age of 79 in his home in Northport, just across, just across the bridge here from Tuscaloosa, Coach Perkins, a native of Petal, Mississippi. He played, he attended and played football at the University of Alabama under legendary head coach Paul W. Bear Bryant. Perkins played from 1963 to 66. He started off as a running back, but then became a very dependable wide receiver from 1964 to 66. We're looking at 63 career catches, 908 career receiving yards, nine touchdowns during that time. A three-time SEC champion from 1964 to 66. A two-time national champion from 1964 and a 1965. We're looking at the SEC Player of the Year, an All-American and a team captain in 1966. So did a lot here as a player in this program. But then he goes to the NFL. He plays for the Baltimore Colts from 1967 to 71 under another legend, legendary coach in Don Shula. He played with Johnny Unitas at quarterback in 1970. The likes of uh, Perkins with the Colts won Super Bowl V that year. And though his playing career in the pros didn't last long, his coaching career, the knowledge that he got from Coach Bryant and Coach Shula really played a role as he, uh, being Perkins, became his coaching career from 1973 to 2014. Just an illustrious career coaching major universities, junior colleges, NFL teams, high schools, and of course he spent time at his alma mater here in Alabama from 1983 to 86. He compiled a record of 32, 15, and won three winning seasons, including the 10-win season in 1986, which was capped off by a Sun Bowl victory, and just the individuals, the young men he mentored when you discussed Cornelius Bennett, Derek Thomas, Keith McCants, Mike Shula, Walter Lewis. I mean, Perkins may have not achieved the, the winning status in terms of championships that Coach Bryant had, but when you look at molding young men, preparing young men for the world, molding young athletes, just being a strong father figure and a strong person, uh, Coach Perkins was fantastic. He was phenomenal. He will greatly be missed. Um, Coach Saban, Athletic Director Greg Byrne, and UA President Dr. Stuart Bale, they all gave their thoughts, their condolences, their well wishes to the family of, of Perkins as he leaves behind his wife, uh, his wife Lisa, and a just tremendous family. So our thoughts and prayers at TDA go out to one Ray Perkins, a phenomenal coach, a strong player, and just a, a leader amongst men passing away this morning at the age of 79 at his home uh, in Northport. But as we dive into now the first topic of conversation <clears throat> for tonight's show, and it goes to this Alabama Crimson Tide team. Coach Saban is trying to do something that has not been done since his third year at the Capstone, the 2009 season, and that's have a perfect year go undefeated, win a conference championship, win a national title, maybe even pop a Heisman Trophy up a deal, maybe, possibly. But the big thing here, go undefeated, have a perfect season, despite the unprecedented weirdness that is this year where COVID is concerned. Now, Coach Saban spoke about this 
on Monday and the discussion with the media, you know, he talked about how this program, this team, not taking Arkansas lightly this week under head coach Sam Pittman, a program that is three and six record wise, but could very easily be six and three. It lost three games by a combined seven points. So Alabama knows that the talent, the improvement that it is with the Arkansas Razorbacks. Saban talked about it. Uh, Christian Harris, sophomore linebacker, talked about it. Other people have spoke on it. So Alabama not taking Arkansas lightly because it's a situation where it wins this game, it finishes the regular season undefeated, it goes into the SEC championship game, has a chance to beat Florida in that matchup, and then go to the college football playoff where it really has an opportunity to win the national championship, have a perfect undefeated season. And what's interesting here is, going back to that 9 season for a minute here, for the Crimson Tide, there were a lot of challenges in that 9 season, right? A lot of challenges when you look at, there, was a, there were a bunch of close games the Tide played that year to where if the passing game struggled with Greg McElroy, Alabama would put Mark Ingram in the Wildcat and have him run the football up and down the field, down the throat of the opponent, whether those were matchups against South Carolina or Ole Miss or Mississippi State. There were, there were quite a few tough, closely contested games in that 9 season. Bama just got a lot of balls to bounce its way, you know, and defensively really, really played tough, played strong at that point in Saban's tenure, but Ty was averaging – just or the tie was allowing just 11.7 points per contest. So you had a lot of close games in 09. You had the two blocked field goals from Terrence Cody in the Alabama matchup against Tennessee that season. You had, you know, some off-field issues where Brandon Dederick, unfortunately, got shot in the forearm that season prior to that year, starting off, and but he was still able to play. So you had some tough breaks. You had some balls to bounce your way. There was some adversity in that 09 season, but Alabama was able to push through it, fight through it, call through it, get a national championship, get a conference title, and Mark Ingram became the first player in program history to win the Heisman Trophy. So as you look at this season right here, the challenges that Alabama has faced when you discuss the coronavirus pandemic, not having spring football, not having a traditional summer workout session, not having a traditional fall camp, and then you've had different players to – contract the virus and be in contract, uh, contact tracing and not playing in games, have to be in quarantine. Of course, last week, we saw where four assistant coaches were not at Tiger Stadium for the Tides matchup against LSU. Uh, Sal Sanceri didn't travel. Freddie Roach didn't travel. Holman Wiggins, the wide receivers coach, didn't travel. And also Carl Scott, the cornerbacks coach, did not travel. So you've had to deal with that. Also, you Alabama's had to deal with Coach Saban himself, you know, contracting the virus and experiencing mild symptoms of said virus and him missing the Iron Bowl and his first game not being out there coaching on the field for the first time in 14 years. So even this year's Alabama team has gone through some challenges. Having the 10-game conference-only schedule where you're not having those easy, simple, lower-tier cupcake matchups where you can possibly or definitely get the freshmen worked in more into games and get their confidence up and get their you know confidence going high and peaking at the right time and seeing what they can do on the field with, you know, a lot of action. In these conference games, it's been a fight to get the freshmen on the field. Saban has had to come up with ways to see, you know, can our first stringers go out there, take care of business, lay down the law so that we can get Bryce Young in the game, so that we can get Jace McClellan and Roy Dell Williams and Javon Baker and Trayshawn Holden and Thayu Jones-Bell some opportunities on the field to you know, get their feet wet in terms of in-game action, in-game experience, in-game responsibility. So this year's Alabama team, much like the 09 group, has its challenges. It, it has its hurdles and it has to climb. It has the heels that it's got to get over. But for the most part, through nine games in a COVID year, Alabama undefeated, perfect, number one team in the country, 
Offensively, it's clicking on all cylinders. Defensively, it's getting better. It's improving with each week and each game. But the question is, can this Alabama team, can this year's team go undefeated? Can this year's team go undefeated? Can this year's team be perfect? And then should it be perfect? Is this the best coaching job of the Nick Saban era when you take into account all that has transpired this year? Is this the best coaching job by Saban? Because since 09, you look at the adversity that Alabama has gone through with each championship, I mentioned 09, 2011, it had the loss to LSU, 9-6, to six, game of the century inside Brian Denny here in Tuscaloosa. But prior to that, it had the awful, horrendous EF5 tornado back in April of that year that ripped through the city and just destroyed buildings, destroyed possessions, destroyed jobs, lives were taken, and Coach Saban challenged his team to go out in the community and help the community, but the and the adversity that that provided, Alabama was able to band together as a team and win a national championship. 2012, the adversity was you no know, losing to Texas A&M, losing to Johnny Manziel. Bama was able to pick up the pieces, push forward, get a national championship. 2015, the adversity was a loss to Ole Miss at the beginning of the year by the score, you know, Ole Miss 43, Bama 37 at Bryant Denny. Bama was an underdog going into the matchup against Georgia at Sanford Stadium in, in, in Athens, but the Crimson Tide got the 38 to 10 win in what was known as the washout, went on to win a national championship. And then 2017, the adversity was losing so many linebackers that year, but Alabama still found a way to press toward the national championship and win that one, even though I had to play to a Tonga Valoa there in the second half against Georgia. So can Alabama go undefeated fans? First question. And number two, if it does, is this the best coaching job of the Nick Saban era? But we take our first break here on the show. Don't touch that dial. Just getting started. When we get back, we go to your phone lines, your chats, your super chats, your dialogue. We have a conversation with you, the fans, after this. You're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith, brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace today by visiting weownthefourthquarter.com. Throw them foes up. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Wit Will Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care. In support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WitWillSports.com and get your title towel today. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. And we are back into the action here, folks, on Wednesday, hump day, hottest show on the streets, number one form for Bama football news in my own words, with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Happy to have everybody tune in to today's show, Alabama taking on Arkansas this weekend on Saturday, 11 a.m. Central Time kickoff. They had to stick Bama with the morning game this time, 11 a.m. Central Time kickoff from DWR Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville. ESPN will have the call on the game. And before we get to your phone line, get to the phone lines to take your calls, the call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang. Got a super chat to get to right here, and it goes to it goes to D. Joshua Benjamin. There we go. D. Joshua Benjamin throwing in that five dollars there via the super chats. Appreciate the love coming from him. But 205-448-1358. The number to call in to let your voice be heard on the show. 205-448-1358. We take a call right now. You're live on in my own words. What's going on? Hey, Stephen Hardy, Nick from Buffalo. What's going on, Nick? How you feeling? Good, good, good. Just getting ready for this weekend. Me and my son are getting pumped up to watch uh, 
watch them take care of business against um, Arkansas. Um, should be an easy game. I'm hoping they're, um, like you said earlier, the Bryce Young, Jason McClellan, Roy Dell get in there for some action um, and hopefully take care of business in the SEC title game. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Coach Saban talked about it on Monday. This is a situation where, you know, he's only went undefeated once in his career at Alabama as a head coach. That was 2009. That team was very close to his heart and still is. But this 2020 group has got a chance to match some history. Yeah, and it's weird. I, I, it feels like they went undefeated more than that. Like, being the amount of times they're in the title game. <laughs> um so it's, it's, it's kind of funny when you look at that stat, but um, still, I mean, it's impressive nonetheless. It is, it is, and, and looking forward to seeing, looking forward to seeing them have success against Arkansas, play well, you know, no injuries, and get set for this SEC championship game. But we appreciate the call, my man. Keep listening to us. Absolutely. We've got a call in there from Buffalo starting this off. We take our second call. You're live on in my own words. What's going on? Hey, Stephen, how you doing? I'm doing well in yourself. Doing great. This is Tim, first time caller. Actually calling from Baton Rouge. Big Road Tide fan. I'm, I'm All right, excited we got Baton Rouge happened. in the house. Baton Rouge, yeah. Um, it, just loving it. That what, you know, Alabama came, took care of business. It's quiet here in Baton Rouge. Nobody's talking. Actually, they're talking more about uh, Eric Gilbert and I guess what he's planning on doing. I don't know. It's just. Uh, I mean, he said he was homesick. Uh, he, are you? Are you buying that? No, I'm not buying it. I listened to the Baton Rouge radio showing on uh, Coach Ogeron's press conference, weekly press conference. He said that his mother came in town. He came into his office and said his body was hurting, so he might opt out. I'm like, come on, really? It's football. So, what do you think about that? I think, Tim, what I think is Eric Gilbert has seen uh, what he's gotten himself into at LSU, and he's thinking, this is not what I signed up for. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I mean, I think, you know, I've said from the beginning, I like Coach O. I, I, I never thought Coach O was a, a X and O coach. He has a good team. I mean, good players around him, good coaches around him last year. A lot of things fell his way. They had an outstanding season. But I always said, I said, let's just see, you know, to be a dynasty and do what Nick Saban did. Well, we'll never see that again. And I just don't think he's in that category. But I'm, I'm waiting, you know, to see how things come around next Wednesday for recruiting. And I uh, just want to say, man, you do an outstanding job. I'm in Baton Rouge and I'm always watching you. And uh, you, 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 I mean, you do a really good job. Keep up the good work. Appreciate the love, Tim. Thanks for the call. Keep listening to us, man. Got a call there from Tim in Baton Rouge. We take our next call. You are live on In My Own Words. What's going on? Steven, what's going on, man? What's happening, Senator? Nothing much, man. Just calling in, man. Just checking in on this road, man. They trying to have you boy out here on these streets, man, out here when it's dark. And I, and I left my glasses at home, so I'm out here struggling, man. I'm out here struggling. They but got I'm, you I'm out there blind, home, man. man. You're out there blind. Blind, man. They got me blind like Ray, bro. They out, got me doing me bad, man. <laughs> how you feeling, though, man? How, how you feeling about this week? I'm ready, man. Honestly, Steven, I'm so ready. It, it's like I'm just ready to get this game over with so we can get over to get on on to Florida. Uh, I'm ready to see us pull in another SEC championship game. I'm ready to see our defense finally prove that they are improving um, against a, a legit offense in Kyle Travis in Florida. Of course, we got Arkansas. I never look past opponents. But let's just face it, man. This year is a different year. Um, what you got, what you've been getting the past two or three weeks from your team, that's what you're going to get the rest of the season. I mean, that goes. I think that goes for everybody across the board. Um, roughly, you know, around game six or seven um, is, is when you know what your team's identity is. This year, it, it was the same thing, same process. You're getting a certain amount of reps on the field on game day. You're working certain game plans, certain schemes. Um, if you ain't got to figure it out by week five, you you just playing to, to, to get reps in after that. But if you got it, if you got a chance, um, that's what your team's going to stick with for the most part. And that's where Alabama and Florida is. Honestly, I feel like we still haven't um, taken the top off of our offense 
because of uh, Jalen Waddle's injury. I think we kind of slowed it down a little bit, and we've still been putting out the same production. So I can't. I, I just can't wait to see what we have in store. But, um, Absolutely, man. Senator, as always, thanks for the call, man. Don't get too blind out there, but thanks for the call. Much love, man. Roll tight. Absolutely. Got to get, get, get a good call in there from Senator. Appreciating that one. We take our next call. You're live on in my own words. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? I'm from down here in Baton Rouge myself. What's going on with you? I had to address the last caller because he ain't from really from down here. If he talking about some royal ties, so we don't do that from down here in Baton Rouge. <laughs> it's LSU. Hey, still repping your team, man. I got to give it to you. Still repping your team, man. I, I respect that. I respect that. Yeah, we got to find out where he called that, bro. We don't do that. Roll time down here. It's all about the Tiger, you heard me? <laughs> got to respect that call. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for calling in. Tiger base. Tiger base. <laughs> you got an LSU fan calling into the show here. I mean, I wonder what they're going to do with Coach O because – People are not happy down there in Tiger Country right now of Coach O, but it is what it is. Cool topic here as you continue to get your thoughts in, 205-448-1358, the number two call in to let your voice be heard on this show, 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358, encouraging all callers, encouraging all thoughts here. But cool topic. Uh, Patrick Sertan II is up for quite a few individual awards this season as it is the time where these foundations and organizations they name their semifinalists and candidates for awards and for Sertan on the defensive side, he is up for the Lot Impact Trophy honor, he's up for the Chuck Bettenderick Award, the Bronco Nagurski Award and the Jim Thorpe Award. Now if you ask, if you ask Sertan about how does he feel in being a candidate for these accolades? He'll tell you, though he appreciates it, he's not concerned about it. He's trying to win a national championship. And I'm loving the mindset of this young man because as talented as Sertan is, he doesn't have a title ring yet. Came in the 2018 class, does have an SEC title, but does not have a national championship ring yet. So he is hungry, trying to get that ring uh, for this program, it, it, especially with this being potentially his final year playing ball for the Crimson Tide. And this season, he has quietly put together a stellar year. He's quietly put together a strong year. Not only has, has, has he been communicating in the secondary uh, as, in terms of getting the calls around to the older guys and the younger guys on defense, he's also been a great help to the uh, trio of Malachi Moore, Brian Branch, and Jordan Battle. As this is Jordan Battle's first year making calls, he's also been a great help to Josh Job, who's playing corner opposite of him. Along with that, his production on the field has been sound as Sertana has only allowed one touchdown to be thrown on him this year, and that goes back to the Tennessee game where Jared Garantano hooked up with Josh Palmer. So, for the most part, a strong year for Sertana, a successful year for Patty Sertan. And this was another one that John Cog, John Ivory, before the season said, man, Sertan, but snap this year, man. Last year, man, Sertan. Now, he did a little bit, but he wasn't impressing me, man. He got snapped this year. Well, John Sertan has snapped to some degree this year for you. He's put together a strong season on the field. He's put together a strong season in the film room, in the weight room, and he is up for these individual awards. But most importantly, he's looking forward to winning that national championship. We take another break here on the show. Don't touch that dial because when we return, we sit down with Chris Franklin and Marquise Mays. Chris Fra uh, Franklin to talk the Eagles and one Jalen Hurts and Marquise Mays to discuss how tough it is for real, for real, to go undefeated at Bama. We speak to our guests after this. You know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw them foes up, but now you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your fourth 
finger bling necklace at weownthefourthquarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four finger bling necklace right now at weownthefourthquarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. We are back into the action, folks, on the hottest show on the streets, the number one form for Crimson Tide football news. That being in my own words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Appreciating everybody for tuning into the show on today. Be sure to like the show. Give a thumbs up on the show. Hit that subscribe button. Turn all of those notifications on so that way you have all the alerts on your Crimson Tide. But we make our way over to the In My Own Words hotline where we pick up our first guest of the evening and it's none other than Mr. Chris Franklin, who covers the Philadelphia Eagles for NJ.com, the New Jersey News.com. Chris, how you feeling, man? Good to have you. Hey, doing great, Steven. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on tonight. Absolutely, absolutely. We got Chris Franklin here on the phone lines right now if you're just tuning in, covering the Philadelphia Eagles. So the news of the week, Chris, came out earlier in the week. Jalen Hurts will be the starting quarterback for the Eagles going up against the New Orleans Saints following you know, his, his job of providing a spark there for the Eagles offense. Carson Wentz has been up and down all year, leading the NFL in interceptions with 15. Uh, what made this move uh, happen for Doug Peterson? Because Carson Wentz was the one they drafted, drafted high, paid him all of his money. Uh, they really respect the guy. But what made Doug Peterson go, you know what? We got to get something different to happen. Let's see what this future is with Jalen Hurts. With Doug Peterson, he's an offensive-minded head coach, and the Eagles value their offense very well. And the fact that Carson Wentz, when he was in there, their offense was stagnant. He was turning the ball over at a, rate, at a, a, a crazy rate. He had 15, like you mentioned, he had 15 interceptions. He also fumbled the ball four times. The fumbles lost, recovered by the defense, and he looked real skittish. He in the side of the pocket, he was like he was a he was seeing ghosts, as was mentioned beforehand. He, he couldn't stay com- comfortable in the middle of the pocket. He was missing open wide receivers as well, too. So it, there were starting to be some grumblings as the weeks went on the last couple of weeks. Uh, there was a report out there that Jeffrey, owner Jeffrey Lurie had gave the okay prior to the Monday night game against the Seattle Seahawks to go ahead and pull him. But it, did, it didn't happen, and he only had Hurts come in those two plays. But after he went ahead and he only threw for 75 yards in the first half against that Packers defense, once, he, once that happened, it, it was just time that they say they pull him and they put Hurts in. Now, has has there been any moments, Chris, where you have seen uh, Jalen, whether it's in practice or whether it's in just different situations where it kind of maybe gave you a feeling that the Eagles probably should have went to him uh, way before now? I think a lot of times when you see it, uh, I think when you, the one thing, he's still working on some things when we saw him, when we got to see him. A lot of times you'll see him working with a lot of the second team uh, receivers, and he looks a lot smoother. He's a lot. He looks a lot more poised than he did when he first got into training camp. There's still some things he needs to work out. He's still throwing off his back foot a little bit too much, but he's working that little forward. He's driving the ball, and it looks a lot better than it did beforehand. So you start to see that his his running ability was never questioned. He was able. He was the Eagles had to use him, brought him in on the read option plays and and little plays around the goal line and short yard situation, and it did move the ball around. I mean, he was able to go ahead. Even his influence on the field against the Baltimore Ravens, his influence around just making a, a on a motion opened up for running back Miles Sanders to go ahead and run for 74 yards. So 
he's been he's been able to go ahead and make his mark in little different ways as well too. I think it's going to be a if he continues on the trajectory that he has done through practice from like I said like earlier from the beginning of the season to where he is now, he he, he should do a lot better. If you're just tuning into the show, ladies and gentlemen, we're joined here live by Chris Franklin, who covers the Philadelphia Eagles for NJ.com, New Jersey news site right there, checking up on one Jalen Hurts, who gets the start this week against those New Orleans Saints. Now, Chris, we, we all know in football and in sports in general, this is part of the entertainment business. So the fans, they dictate the market. The fans dictate what's hot, what's not. The fans drive the excitement, the entertainment entertainment, the value, and when you look at Eagle fans, they're very prideful, they're, very, they're, they're a bunch that they believe we should be in the conversation every year to win a Super Bowl or at least make a deep run in the playoff. So with the move or with the switch to Hurts, what has been the polls in terms of the fans right now in Philadelphia? Uh, I think the, the best word to say is finally. <laughs> After the last two weeks, it's been a finally that there's been a move there. I think there's a little bit more extra re- excitement right now because as this team was supposed to was picked to win the NFC East, and this this division has just been bad this whole entire year. I mean, right now, as bad as it is at three and one, the Eagles could still win the division. It, it's it's just been crazy. But I think right now, when when the team when the fans see this now, it gives them it breathe breathe new life into this team in the fan base and it looks like that people will actually want to tune in a little bit more and watch more intently to see what Hertz can do. And if they somehow, if it's crazy to imagine, but if they somehow go ahead and beat the, beat the saints and then beat the Arizona Cardinals all of a sudden, and with the way this division goes, the New York giants have a, have a tough schedule. This is anything's possible. So right now I'd probably say about a good 85%. If I had to put a number on 85% of the fans were looking forward to this move happening. So, so uh, last quick one here, Chris, uh, from my end. Do you see a, a situation where, with Hurts, the Eagles can make a miraculous comeback and win the division? I think that uh, if they, uh, if I know that's tough. I know that's tough. <laughs> with uh, with they're, they're going to face. I mean, it's not helping that the team is saying, "Hey, you know what? Let's make your first start against the team with the, who's given up the fourth most, uh, the fourth fewest." passing yards in the league in the Saints. The Saints have been really tough this year. If they somehow can steal that game, I think the following week against the Arizona Cardinals and take care of business against the Dallas Cowboys and the Washington football team, if they find out, pretty much it's going to depend on next week. This week I just don't see it, but it's going to be tough. I mean, right now, I mean, if you ask some people in Philadelphia right now, they'll be happy with a top 10 draft pick right now. But I just don't, right now, if I had to put a finger on it, I just don't see them going ahead and win the division. But it's sure going to be interesting to watch. He's Chris Franklin, ladies and gentlemen, covering the Philadelphia Eagles for NJ.com, New Jersey news side. Joining us live on the show for Talk One, Jalen uh, Talk One, Jalen Hurts, as he gets the start here for the Eagles this week against the New Orleans Saints. Chris, man, appreciate you coming on, sharing the information here with us on Jalen Hurts, why Chris, why Doug Peterson made the move, and what we could be looking forward to seeing from Hurts as he makes his first start. Take care of yourself, man. Be good. Thanks, Stephen, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Chris Franklin there of, of uh, NJ.com, New Jersey news site. They're talking one. Jalen Hurts getting the start for the Philadelphia Eagles. But we continue on the phone lines because now we pick up the real heavy hitter right here, a, a two-time BCS national champion and one of those members of the only lone, perfect, undefeated team of the Nick Saban era. You know who he is. It's Marquise Mays in the building. Brother, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. How are you? I'm doing well, Marquise. Doing fantastic. Happy, happy to have you on here right now. So, it is hard to go undefeated, man, but you guys did it in 2009, the lone undefeated team of the Saban era. Now, Coach Saban has mentioned that he wants to make that history again with this year's team, and so far this group, 9-0 and on the year, will play for the SEC title. But how hard was it for that 9 team to go undefeated? What were some of the major challenges that y'all faced? Uh, we face being complacent in games where you seen games like uh Tennessee. We were, we were really complacent in games we got up for. 
like uh, Florida and stuff like that. But I think complacency is, is really the most important thing, though. So trying not to be complacent, the big thing here for this team to go undefeated. But w- w- one of the coolest things from that 0-9 team is just how you guys were able to bond together despite, you know, all the challenges y'all had. So kind of uh, what were some of the ways that y'all bonded together, y'all kept that right mindset, y'all kept that right energy? Like what kept y'all together as a group and making sure that you don't drop the ball, I'm not dropping the ball, like we going to do this? Uh, to be honest, it was just a uh, mindset back then, you know. Uh, everybody was always – nobody on that team wanted to lose. Nobody on that team wanted to lose. So it was, it was just – it was the fact that nobody wanted to lose, and that was just how it go. You know, we had got so close a year prior and lost to Florida and ended up losing to Utah in the bowl game. So, you know, once we got together that – I think in the fourth quarter, we just told each other, you know, we weren't going to lose next year. We were going to do everything to get back. And, I mean, we had a couple breaks, like some – some uh, the Tennessee game we had, Cody and them blocked the field goal. And that was really the only close game we had. So, I mean, I don't know. But then we didn't have the playoffs either, so it wouldn't – it was just one – championship game so it was a lot easier for us too if you're just tuning into the show, ladies and gentlemen, we got former Alabama wide receiver Marquise Mays on the line, two-time national champion, 2009 and 2012, but he was on the lone undefeated national championship team in 09 under Coach Saban. Marquise, was, was, it, was there ever a moment, like, you out there with your boys, your brothers, your teammates throughout that 09 season, was there ever a moment where you looked at your teammates they looked at you like y'all looked at each other and y'all was like, dang, like, we can really, truly go undefeated. Like, ain't nobody messing with us. Was there ever a moment where either y'all was in the practice field or y'all was in the film room or whatever the case may be that y'all felt like we can really go undefeated? I, we felt like that the year prior. I, I mean, we just came up short. I don't think, I think, uh, man, the guy that was in that locker room was highly comfortable. Like uh, we had some highly confident guys in the lo- in that locker room, and man, we didn't really think nobody was supposed to beat us. So it was it started it started that summer, you know. Well, really in January doing fourth quarter program, it started, and we just felt like nobody could beat us, and shit, we feel like we still the best team now. We got Marquise Mays on the phone line if you're just tuning into the show talking the 2009 you know, national championship team, the, the things that uh, that group had to overcome. And as this group here in 2020 trying to match a little history here, if you will. So you look at this group, Marquise, and uh, – you know, Coach Saban going after the seventh national championship uh, in his coaching tenure. Do you sense this team uh, – do you sense that this team can go undefeated – what are you liking about this team? Uh, what needs to be improved? Do you see this team going undefeated? Uh, I do. I do. I think the only team, I think one team will give them a, a challenge, and that would be Clemson because of uh, the quarterback and the run, especially the running back. But, uh, yeah, I think they can. I, I hope I hope for sure they do. But, you know, uh some things I I love the offense. I really do love the offense because they get receivers involved a lot. Well, they have been the last I want to say about five years. It done went away from a run first offense, so I like that as a receiver. But uh, the defense, uh, I was critical of the defense a couple weeks back, and uh, I see a lot of improvement. I see a lot of improvement. I see guys. Uh, or buying into the program or whatever it was coach was preaching. And uh, I kind of like that. But I think we just need to keep improving on defense. And uh, it'll be fine. 
Improving on defense, that coming from one Marquise Mays here on the show. Joining us live via the phone lines, former Alabama receiver, part of two national championship teams, 2009 and 2011. But he was on the only perfect undefeated national championship team that went 14-0 and in 09. Marquise, man, appreciate you coming on to spend some time with us. You stay safe. Take care, man. Be good, man. All right. Thank you. Always good having Marquise Mays on the talk that 2009 championship team as Coach Saban. That group is close to his heart, but he wants to see can this 2020 group match that history, match that intensity, match that goal, and give him his second undefeated, straight up undefeated team in his tenure as the head coach of the Crimson Tide. We're taking a little break right now on the show, but when we return, we get back to the phone lines. We entertain your calls, your thoughts, your views on Bama after this. Don't touch that dial. Call in right now as we're taking your calls up next on In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith, brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Visit weownthefourthquarter.com now to get your four-finger bling necklace. You know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw them foes up. But now you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at weownthefourthquarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at weownthefourthquarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. Back to the show, folks, from the break on the number one uh, source for Crimson Tide football news in my own words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. And before we get back to the phone lines, got to remind you of this right here, mybookie.ag. That is mybookie.ag. New sponsor to Touchdown Alabama Magazine. You're trying to win some money. You're trying to get big in the betting game. You're trying to see, well, taking that parlay play there from Alabama, is it worth doing? Check out our guys at mybookie.ag. That's mybookie.ag. Make the right play and sign up today at mybookie.ag. And when you do, and when you do sign up, use the promo code TD Alabama to get your deposit matched halfway up to a thousand bucks. You cannot beat that with a stick. If you use the promo code TD Alabama, you can get your deposit matched up halfway up to one thousand bucks. That's mybookie.ag. Once again, that's mybookie.ag. Get your win on with them right now. The sponsor there for uh, Touchdown Alabama Magazine. That link for mybookie.ag will be found in the description. But we get to your phone calls right now, 205-448-1358. But I'm going to call in to let your voice be heard on the show, 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. Definitely want to hear from you. But until you guys, or wow, you guys, as I should say, Get your thoughts in here to get to the phone lines. Cool topic, and it goes to the Alabama football team in terms of having fun. I want to dispel a myth right now. I like dispelling myths. I, I want to dispel a myth right now. So people feel like the University of Alabama players do not have fun with Coach Saban and the Crimson Tide. It's all business. It's all serious. Nobody has fun. Uh, it's emotionless. Now, according to, to T. Bob Bear, former LSU player, LSU fullback, 
he sat there and said on his podcast that LSU was like Greece. You know, they're like the, the country Greece. You know, they're, they're passionate. They're fun. They're exciting. They can have some downfalls at times, but you can relate to them. They're human. They like to have fun. At Alabama, they're emotionless. They're just a bunch of expectations. They don't like to have fun. Well, there's a video on TikTok, courtesy of one of my good friends and former Alabama player, Mac Hereford. So check out this video from Mac Hereford, and you tell me if Alabama football don't have fun. Check out this video. Toast to the ones that we lost on the way, cause the drinks bring back all the memories. And the memories bring back memories, bring back you. Tip, tip. There's a time when I remember When I did not know no pain When I believe in forever And everything will stay the same Now my heart feel like December When somebody say your name And I can't reach out to call you But I know I will one day Everybody hurts sometimes Everybody hurts someday yeah, yeah. But everything gonna be alright that's just a little video there on TikTok from my man, former Alabama wide receiver Matt Carrefour, just taking that shot there at T-Bob A Bear statement of, yes, players at Alabama do have fun. Winning is fun, and as long as you are winning, having fun winning, winning championships, then that is all that matters for the Crimson Tide. We go to the phone lines right now. We pick up my man, Wayland. Wayland, what's going on, man? Happy Wednesday to you. This is, this is Tell the Truth Monday. This is Tell the Truth Monday. I know it's Wednesday, but it's Tell the Truth Monday. This is Coach Ed O from down here at LSU. I have to apologize. They caught me throwing off my headset and my battery off my off my belt there on that 61-yard touchdown Smitty caught. I know I was cussing everybody out, but I don't know what's happened down here at LSU. Uh, we're losing another player once again to Alabama. Uh, another player to Alabama, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, LSU again will be a uh, world champion or, or national champion, and we're going to prepare this week to play whoever we need to play Saturday, whoever it is, uh, high school, college, peewee, toy bowl, I don't care who it is. But anyway, <laughs> get out of here, Ed. Anyway, Coach Perkins was a legend. 64, 65, 66. He should have been a national champion in 66, but people hate winners. They hate people that have success. They always, a lot of them hated Coach Bryant. Coach Perkins went on to be a Super Bowl champion. Lower the great Johnny United. Let's see if I can remember. If I think correctly, I believe Bill Curry was the uh, center on that team. I have to go back and look. I may be wrong about that, Steve, but I think Bill was, so... We're going to remember Coach uh, Perkins, you know, he was a great guy and a, uh, a true legend in Alabama. He was, and Coach Saban spoke on him. Uh, Greg Burns spoke on him. Dr. Bell spoke on him. And I mentioned this before. He may not have been, you know, the coaching national champion that Coach Bryant was, but he, I, I give him this respect, he tried hard to be. He really did. He, he stepped in to some big shoes, and Coach Perkins gave it everything he had. And uh, just the players that he molded, if you talk to Cornelius Bennett, Bennett loves him. You talk, you know, Derek Thomas, got rest his soul, loved him. Walter Lewis, uh, Mike, uh, Mike Shula, uh, Keith McCants, the players that, that, that Ray Perkins was around, they loved him, and he loved those guys. So, I mean, as far as the, the, uh, the young men that he molded, uh, in Alabama, he will always go down as, as to being a great character and a great attitude guy that tried his hardest to to win every time he was on the field. He done a good job of it. He had a great career. 80% of the people just dream about doing things that uh, Coach Perkins done. Uh, they forgot a lot about what he had done at Alabama. But he's a legend. He'll be remembered. So they, uh, I think this team will go all the way this year. Got a lot of people watching over him this uh pretty important guy that's going on. I think they'll give him a little motivation, and we'll move on through this, hopefully, without this COVID. All right, I'm out of here. Y'all looking good. Everybody in the chat uh, looking good. Uh, Y'all be safe. 
go get this Roni, and we'll be back on Friday, hopefully there. See you later. Y'all be good. Bye-bye, everybody. Appreciate the call there coming from Wayland. They're giving us a good call there on a Wednesday. Crimson Tide getting set to take on the Arkansas Razorbacks on Saturday. DWR Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville trying to get that 10th win of the regular season and move on to the SEC Championship game against Florida. We take a break right now, but upon our return, we discuss one Steve Sarkeesian. He is a semifinalist for the Brawls Award, which goes to the nation's top assistant coach in college football. What would this mean for Sark if he gets it? What would it mean for Alabama if Sarkeesian is to win the award? We'll talk Sarknado after this. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in my own words, how to show on the streets, number one form for Bama News here on a Wednesday hump day. Crimson Tide taking on Arkansas this weekend on Saturday, 11 a.m. Central Time kickoff from DWR Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville. ESPN will have the call on the matchup. Alabama looking for that 10th win of the regular season so that it can move on to face Florida in the SEC title game and hopefully move on to the college football playoff where Saban is going at their national championship number seven in his tenure. But before we dive into the final topic of today's show, got to remind you of TDAWare.com. That is TDAWare.com. Make us your plug, your one-stop shop for all of your Alabama football clothes and apparel purchasing needs. If you just so fancy the I Love Hearing Touchdown Alabama shirts, the Let Them Play shirts, the We Want Football shirts, hoodies, all shapes, sizes, colors, we got you covered right here. TDAWare.com. Do your shopping right here. TDAWare.com. Uh, show them that support for Coach Saban. University of Alabama, the student athletes, and us here at Touchdown Alabama Magazine. But we look at this right here, Steve Sarkeesian. Steve Sarkeesian, a semifinalist, one of 56, that's a lot, one of 56 semifinalists for the Broyles Award, which goes to the nation's top assistant coach in college football. The announcement came on Tuesday from the Frank and Barbara Broyles Foundation. And uh, this is awesome here for Sarkeesian because it shows the full circle development and maturation process he has been on since you know, earlier in his career where he, where he was the head coach of, at Washington, the head coach at Southern California, and things didn't go out, the things didn't work out according to plan. He left both places. He was in kind of a low spot, a low area in his life, and Coach Saban reached out to him, brought him to Alabama in 2016 to be an offensive analyst, and then he goes to the uh, Atlanta Falcons 2017-2018 as an OC offensive coordinator comes back to Alabama 2019 as the as the uh, the head play call for the Tide and after a good season last year despite an injury to one Tua Tagovailoa what a year Sark has had this season calling this Alabama offense one of the most if not the most balanced 
explosive groups in college football. 49.2 points per game averaging. That's third in the nation. Uh, 548.3 yards total offense. That's sixth in college football. We're looking at eight straight games with at least 40 points, including two 60-point games against Ole Miss and Kentucky for the first time since 2015. And we're talking about the Lane Kiffin regime here. Alabama's got a 3,000-yard passer in Mac Jones, 3,113 yards. Uh, Alabama's got a 1,000-yard rusher in Najee Harris, 1,038 yards, and a 1,000-yard receiver in Devontae Smith with uh, 1,305 yards. Now, all three players are leading college football in respective categories in their different positions, and then all three are potential Heisman finalists. So, Sarkeesian has done a phenomenal job here you know, with this offense, and, and that's not even mentioning the red zone efficiency that Alabama's put up. Alabama's averaging, you know, scoring in the red zone over 90% of the time. That's the highest of the Saban era, over 90% Alabama is executing scoring touchdowns here in the red zone. So big ups there to Sarkeesian. When you look at the Broyles Award, since it was given out or first presented in 1996, 18 of 23 assistant coaches have gone on to be head coaches, including the likes of Kirby Smart and Michael Oxley. Kirby Smart won the award. In 2009, as Alabama's defensive coordinator, he's now the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs. And Coach Locks won the award in 2018 as Alabama's offensive coordinator. He is now the head coach of the Maryland Terrapins. Now, does this mean if Sark gets the award, he's going to he's gonna immediately up and leave Alabama? Not necessarily. And here's why. Um, the U.S. Alabama fans... U.S. Tide fans, of course, the families of Bryce Young and Paul Tyson, they want to see, can Steve Sarkeesian get one of these two? Can Steve Sarkeesian turn Bryce Young or Paul Tyson into a household name? That is the next move here on Sarkeesian's, on, uh, Sarkeesian's card here. We have seen what he's done with Mac Jones, and it has been incredible. Mac 10 completing 75.7% of passes. Mac Jones, the fifth quarterback of the Nick Saban era to have 3,000 passing yards. His 27 touchdowns tied for third in college football. He leads the NCAA in total quarterback rating and raw quarterback rating. It has been a big season here for Mac Jones. So based off what Sark has done with Mac, you ask the Alabama faithful, Coach Saban, and the parents, the families of Bryce Young and Paul Tyson, they want to see, can Sark get one of these two young men to pop? If he can get one of these two young men to pop, then it becomes even more entertaining, even more intriguing to watch Todd football just due to Alabama starting to kind of become quarterback you here a little bit. It had success with Jalen Hurts. Then Tua Tagovailoa came in here. Now you look at the success of Mac Jones. Then you look at, well, if you can get a Paul Tyson or a Bryce Young to pop, there goes one of those two guys. And then not to mention Alabama if it can get – the likes of uh, Jalen Milrow, the four-star from Texas, to sign for the 2021 class, then there's him. So I don't think Sarkeesian leaves just yet. I think he's. I think he wants to see, can he get a Bryce Young or can he get a Paul Tyson to emerge for years to come to make sure this future is in line. Of course, Sarkeesian has also mentioned he doesn't feel like he's quite ready yet to leave Coach Saban's side. He is considered the coach in waiting to take over upon Saban calling it a career. But kudos to Sark for being one of the semifinalists for the Broyles Award. But if you want the best in news, notes, information, and coverage here, people, on your Crimson Tide, very simple and easy to access this. You get it by downloading the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app from the iPhone App Store if you're rocking Team Apple, Google Play Store if you've got the Android phone. For your audio listening needs, we got you right here. iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Play. 
TuneIn Radio, Overcast.fm, or iHeartRadio. Got you covered right there. If the good and gracious Lord sees fit, I'll be back on Friday continuing the topics and conversation that is Crimson Tide football. Be sure, Baba Nation, you can purchase individual copies of Touchdown Alabama magazine. Have those sent to your door. That link will be in the description. Also, cop you that four-finger bling necklace, courtesy of weownthefourthquarter.com. That link will be in the description as well. But until next time, people, husbands love your wives. Wives appreciate value. Those husbands, children, school still in right now. So still do, do those things legitimately now to not be bored. As always, get you those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. Protect yourself. Protect the loved ones around you. Until next time, folks, I'm your man, Stephen M. Smith, and this has been In My Own Words.